My name is Jack Dunard. I'm a program director in the Department of Energy's RPE agency, and I'd like to discuss reducing methane emissions as an area of consideration to the agency's Open 21 program. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas with a greenhouse gas warming potential 25 to 87 times higher than carbon dioxide. So ARPA is interested in disruptive ideas to prevent methane emission from getting into the atmosphere or removing methane from the air. Unlike carbon dioxide, natural processes attenuate methane emissions through chemical reactions in the atmosphere and by methane-consuming bacteria called methanotropes. As a result of natural attenuation, we don't need to reduce methane emissions to zero in order to have an impact on climate forcing. In fact, if we could reduce methane emissions by 10 to 30 percent, we could start to reduce the concentration of methane in the atmosphere and have an immediate positive impact. Methane's high greenhouse gas warming potential and the ability to rapidly reduce methane concentrations in the atmosphere make methane emissions an interesting complement to ongoing CO2 reduction initiatives. I've been working with a team of RPE colleagues on anthropogenic methane emissions for about the last nine months. And this has led to a proposed program called Remedy. Remedy is intended to focus on three methane sources related to the use of fossil fuels. But methane anthropogenic sources go beyond what Remedy will cover, including enteric fermentation, the largest source of methane emissions in the U.S., which comes from the digestive tract of about 95 million cows and other ruminants, thousands of landfills, millions of abandoned and orphan wells, and thousands of abandoned coal mines. And if we can't catch methane at the source, we're interested in options to remove methane from air. Let's discuss the sources, starting with enteric fermentation. Plants photosynthesize carbon dioxide to make biomass, and ruminants eat the plants. About 10% of that carbon gets converted into methane, which has a greenhouse gas warming potential, as you noted before, 25 to 87 times higher than the CO2 that went into its feed. Consequently, ruminants have a major impact on climate change. So what are the options? The problem is constrained. We want to reduce methane, but not impact food supply. This slide shows a wide range of approaches that are under consideration. RPE is looking for novel, disruptive solutions, not just incremental advances to the state of the art. But we don't have a preferred approach. So we'd like to see what your thoughts are on creative ideas for solving this problem. Now I'd like to turn attention to landfills, abandoned wells, and mines. Landfills are the third largest source of anthropogenic methane emissions in the U.S. Bacterial decay of organic material produces a roughly 50-50 mix of carbon dioxide and methane, which continues to be generated long after active landfills are closed. Methane's, our EPA's ELMA program has promoted landfill gas recovery for years. At RPE, we're interested in going beyond what ELMA does and trying to identify novel and disruptive approaches to prevent methane emissions from getting to the atmosphere, particularly for landfills where gas recovery is not economic. And we'd like to target the so-called super emitters, which is those landfills that are responsible for a disproportionate share of methane emissions. The U.S. has been producing oil and gas for more than 150 years. Wells can emit methane long after they go out of production. There's a growing awareness of methane emissions from orphan wells and also from plugged and abandoned wells that may have been sealed but are now leaking. One challenge is that the number and location of these legacy wells is not known. In the early days of oil and gas production, wells were drilled much closer than today and the records weren't as thorough. The EPA estimates that there may be 3 million of these legacy wells. The National Energy Technology Lab has developed a much more sensitive aerial survey tool, and results from new recent work suggest the number could be substantially higher. Today, methane emissions have been measured at fewer than 1,000 of the more than 1 to 5 to 6 to 7 to 20 million wells that may be out there, and the emission rates vary by more than four orders of magnitude. So there's challenges for finding these wells, quantifying their emissions, 
and again, abating super emitters that may be causing a disproportionate amount of the emissions from these sources. Abandoned coal mines represent a similar challenge. There's more than 10,000 legacy mines, and the EPA LMOP program is promoting methane recovery from 45 of the gaseous mines. That still leaves many mines emitting methane, where rates are too low to economically recover the methane, but high enough to cause environmental harm. And again, a relatively small fraction of the population of these abandoned mines has a disproportionate impact on the environment. RPE is looking for novel and disruptive solutions. Here's an example of an approach which is not intended to limit your ideas. As mentioned before, methanotrophs account for about 20% of the methane attenuation in the environment. There's been significant advances in characterizing these bacteria, as well as studies showing how they thrive in air or even 1,300 meters below the surface. One interesting paper in estimated that methanotrophic biofilms in Vietnamese caves removes as much as 150,000 metric tons a year of methane. Perhaps intentionally designed and managed biological systems could have even higher productivities and address methane emissions from a variety of sources. And if we can't stop methane at the source, RPE is interested in ideas to remove it from the air. In some ways, this idea is like direct air capture for CO2, but it's harder for several reasons. First, the concentration of methane is much lower, 2 ppm versus 400 ppm for carbon dioxide. Second, methane doesn't like to interact with other molecules, whether to absorb or even to ignite. So our options are available. Again, here are some examples not intended to limit your concepts. Nature uses chemical reactions in the trophosphere and stratosphere that are affected at low temperatures and concentrations. Perhaps this chemistry could be replicated or augmented with catalysts. And methanotrophs, as mentioned before, are another option. In addition, to, in addition to levering nature, we can consider leveraging human activity. Maybe there's a way to piggyback on the more than 500 million acres of land that's used for crops. Or consider cooling towers used for everything from data centers to commercial buildings to power plants. These units move enormous amounts of air, operate at temperatures quite conducive to bacteria, and in fact, there's an entire industry that works to prevent organisms from growing in these systems. What if they were managed proactively to remove methane? Maybe we could turn part of the problem into part of the solution. I hope that you'll think about ideas for addressing methane emissions since it's an important and difficult problem. We need innovative, creative solutions. Nature shows us that it can be done. Now we need to figure out how to eliminate methane emissions faster and at a lower cost. RPE's Open 21 program is a great place to propose a solution. There's further information on our website and video with additional ideas areas for your consideration. Concept papers are due April 6th. Thanks for your interest. We look forward to learning about your ideas. <laughs>